All right, today I'm going to show you how to solve for the displacement of an object using the velocity versus time graph of that object's motion. And I want to explain to you how to find the displacement without getting into things like calculus. I'm just going to stick with some basic equations and some concepts that lead us to the displacement from this graph. Now before we get into the equations here, we need to talk about whatever this object is actually doing. You see, at first, this object is moving along with a constant velocity, meaning it's not speeding up or slowing down, it's just cruising along at 10 meters per second. But then, after one second, it continues to move forward, but it's slowing down, until this point in time right here when it's actually stopped. After that, the object moves backwards and speeds up. We see this line, this velocity, getting farther away from a value of zero, meaning it's speeding up, but in the negative, direction. And the fact that this object moves backwards is going to become important later on in finding the total displacement of the object. And I'll show you how to deal with that when we get there. Now in order to find the displacement of this object as it moves, we need to know the mathematical relationship between velocity and displacement. And velocity can be given by a change in position or a change in time. Or if you want to get more strict about this, you could even say that is an infinitely small change in position over an infinitely small change in time. But again, that's getting into calculus, and I don't want to go there today. But if we take this equation and rearrange it for this change in position, another word for change in position is displacement. And rearranging this equation, we come up with velocity multiplied by a change in time, or an elapsed time. Now, strictly speaking, this velocity is in fact an average velocity, but that's not going to present a huge problem here. I'm going to show you conceptually how this will tie into our graph in just a second, and the fact that there's an average symbol here above this V isn't going to mess anything up for us. You see, according to this equation, a displacement is equal to the velocity multiplied by time. And to see how this equation is useful on our graph, I want to look not at the entire graph all at once. I want to look at just a little corner of this graph over here. You see, for the first second of this motion, this object is moving along at a constant 10 meters per second. So going back to the equation, the velocity is going to be 10 meters per second. That is this dimension right here on our graph. And the elapsed time is going to be one second. That's this dimension right along here. And sure, you can look at this as a physics equation, but if you look at what's happening here, if we multiply this height by this, what is effectively base, what we get is the area of a rectangle traced out right here. Or really what you could say is the area of this rectangle is equal to the displacement of the object over this period of time. I mean, look at the units here. On our y-axis, we have velocity, that is meters per second. And if you multiply those meters per second by the base here, that is time, which is measured in seconds, well, meters per second multiplied by seconds is going to give us meters. That is the units of displacement. And so armed with the idea that the area underneath this entire curve is the total displacement of the object over these six seconds, we're going to solve for the total displacement of the object from start to finish in this problem. Now to do that, we're not going to come up with some functions for these lines like somebody might do in a calculus class. Instead, what we're going to do is just break this curve up into three separate areas or phases of motion. You see, in this first phase of motion, I'm going to call that D1, we have an object moving along at 10 meters per second for one second. Well, the area of this rectangle is going to have a base of one, or really one second, and a height of 10 meters per second, leaving us with a displacement over the first second of 10 meters. In the second phase of motion, when the object is moving forward but slowing down, I'm going to call that D2 over that second phase, is going to be equal to the area, not of a rectangle, but of this triangle. Now this triangle has a base that starts at a time of one second and goes to three and a half seconds. So we're going to have one half times the base that is 2.5 seconds multiplied by the height, that's 10. I'll put units on here. Now it leaves us with 12.5 meters. 
So in this second phase of motion, the object moves forward 12.5 meters. Now in this third phase of motion, there's a little trick that catches a lot of people out. The displacement in that third phase of motion is equal to the area traced out by this triangle right here. So it's going to be 1 half times 2.5 seconds because this base of the triangle is 2.5 seconds long multiplied by the height right here. And the temptation is to say that's 10 meters per second. But realize this object eventually is going 10 meters per second backwards. So this is in fact going to be negative. Well, mathematically that means the displacement over the third phase of motion is going to be negative 12.5 meters. You see, anytime an object is moving forward, the velocity is going to be positive, and that yields a positive displacement over that period of time. We see that graphically as an area above the x-axis. Anytime an object is moving backwards, like over here, the area that is traced out by the graph is underneath the x-axis, or really we would say it's a negative displacement because it's beneath the x-axis, so we call it a negative area. Now the total displacement is just the sum of these three displacements and adding those all up. And we find the total displacement from start to finish in this problem is 10 meters. So next time you're trying to solve for the displacement of an object given just the velocity versus time graph, remember all you need to do is solve for the area between the motion curve and the x-axis and that will yield your total displacement. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.